Greetings, guys. Here's another lesson about word problems. And you'll notice at the very top here, it says W equals RT. Well, guess what? Not only does distance equals rate times time, but work also equals rate times time. You might be saying, what is that all about? Well, let me explain. Rate. When it comes to work, everybody has a certain speed they can do something. So, for example, if I'm going to do the gardening at my house, it takes me four hours to get the whole job done. If I take four hours to get the job done, that means I get one quarter of that job done every hour. Four hours total, one quarter every hour. So my rate is one-fourth. So here's the deal with this. If you give me four hours to work, well, guess what? I am going to complete one entire job. So when it comes to a work equals rate times time problem, asking the question, how long does it take me to do the yard work? Well, the answer is four hours, if it takes four hours. When we use this relation here, when we use this, it's when we're talking about more than one person working together. So all of the problems we're going to be looking at have to do with more than one person completing a task. So, for example, I'm just going to come up with one real quick. If it takes me four hours to do the yard work and it takes my son five hours to do the yard work, how long would it take us working together? That's the type of question we're going to be answering in these. Now, as you can see right here, I have four problems on the screen. These four problems are my examples. And just like I did with the distance equation, here's all my setups. Just so you know, here's every single one of my examples set up and worked out for you so you can refer to this um, if you get stuck on how to set something up. But I am going to walk you through how I did this because... Here are the problems in your future. These are the ones from the actual assignment. So here, these work problems are going to be very similar to the four uh, examples I made up. And then here's the answer key. Just so you know, there is an answer key. All of this information is on Canvas also. So you can, if you go to the module, you could totally see all of these uh, practice sheets and this homework assignment. Now, I want you to know, I wrote my answers in fraction form. Doesn't mean I hate decimals. I don't. Um, but I just happen to use mixed numbers. Uh, as long as your answer is correct, I would give it to you. So um, if I want you to give me decimals, usually I will tell you, you know, give me decimal answers, round to the nearest blank or whatever so that you know that I got actual exact numbers, I left them as mixed numbers. Except for, of course, stuff like this. 12 is 12, 6 is 6, 4 is 4. Okay? Those are not fraction answers. Let's begin, though. I'm going to scroll back up to the top, and let's start setting some of this stuff up. So I'm going to need a little space. I'm going to get rid of my little squiggles here. And let's begin. Problem number one. Tom can paint a house in 13 hours and Pam can paint the same house in 11 hours. How long would it take them working together? Okay, once again, here we go. Just like we did with the distance problems, I'm going to have a rate, a time, and this time instead of distance, it's going to be work gets completed. So I'm going to do rate times time equals how much work is completed. You're going to see some similarities between a distance equals rate times time problem and a work equals rate times time problem. Very similar, but not the same. So here we go. I'm going to compare two things. Here's Tom. He's going to work. And here's Pam. Pam's going to work. 
So first things first, rate is always a fraction. Rate is always a fraction. Is that true for a distance equals rate times time problem? No, that is unique to these type of problems. So let's begin. Tom can paint a house in 13 hours. Well, guess what? If he works for one hour, he's going to get one thirteenth of that house painted. Use the same type of logic. If Pam can paint that out house in uh, 11 hours, she's going to get one eleventh of that job done if she works alone. Now, it says here, how long would it take them working together? I have no idea how long it will take them working together. I don't know, but I do know this. Rate times time equals how much work is done. So I go 1 13th times x, 1 11th times x, and I know that these two people are working together. So here's how a work problem looks when you put it together. Here's Tom working. Tom is doing part of the work, and Pam is doing some of the work. They are going to complete one entire job. They are going to get that one task that they started to do done. There's not seven houses. There's not 20 houses. They're getting one house painted. So just like I did on the other worksheets, I multiplied this one by 143 because it is a rational equation. And I could solve this thing. I ended up with 11x plus 13x equals 143. And I solved it. And just so you know, I got x equals 5.96 hours. I did. That's what I got. That's what I wrote on the thing. Now, if I wanted to, I could say that's 5 and 43 fiftieths hours. That's also legit. Just be uh, aware, on the worksheet, I already showed you the answer key. Everything's written in mixed number form. So it's going to be a mixed number. Anywho, let's go to the second problem. Now, um, I'm not going to go through all the solving and everything from here on out because I don't, I'm trying to make these videos so they're not incredibly long, but you can scroll down. You can see that on the second one I did it, third one I showed my work, etc. So you can see it if you go back and you want to check out the equation part of my job. And I'm not worried about the equation part for you guys. I think you'll be able to solve them without a lot of issues. Um, but it's the setup that I want to make sure you got. So here we go. Problem number two, I'm going to take this away here. I'm going to get rid of this information so that I have a clean slate. And I will get rid of this info. Whoops, I'm going to end up taking away part of my chart. Oh, there it is. I knew it. Whoop. Okay. So problem number two. Two pumps working together can lower the water level in a dam by one meter. How long does it take them to do this? Seven and one-fifths hours. Now, just going to tell you, since rate is always a fraction, and then I'm going to go rate times time equals work, I'm going to tell you right now, 7 and 1 fifth is not the way I want to use that number. I'm going to convert it and call it 36 fifths. Now, the other thing is, don't get locked into one type of thinking. Two pumps working together can lower the rate, the water level in this dam in this much time. This is a time number, not a rate. This is a time number. And I'm going to label it. I have pump number one doing some work. I have pump number two doing some work. Now it says one pump working alone would take 12 hours. So if it takes one of these guys 12 hours, that means one twelfth of the job is done every hour. 
How long would it take the other pump working alone? I don't know, but I do know that rate is always a fraction. So I'm going to set it up like that. Then I'm going to do rate times time. I'm going to do rate times time. Heck, I could rate times time. I could cross cancel there equals work. Rate times time equals work. And I am going to take whatever's in the work box and I'm going to combine it and say it's going to get one job done. That's how I set up my equations. Now, I want to bust fractions. I don't want to have fractions around, so let's scroll down. We'll see how I got this. Take a look. 3 fifths plus 36 over 5x equals 1. I multiplied everything by 5x, and I canceled stuff out. When I got to the end, I found out x equals 18. So let's answer the question. It said, how long would it take the other pump working alone? It would take the other pump 18 hours working alone. Remember, the first pump they told me would get it done in 12 hours, right? So, if you have two pumps working at the same time, even though neither of them is working that fast, it would make the entire job smaller than both of their rates. The entire job only takes seven and one-fifth hours if both pumps are working. Okay. Okay. Let's take a look at number three, because this is the one that will trip you up the most. And I'm going to erase all this other stuff here. I'm just going to start fresh. There's so much information in my way here. I'm going to cut all this info. Good. Let's just start fresh. John can do a task in 18 hours. Now, you guys should be keyed in on this now that John has a rate. Whoop. If John can do this job in eight hours or 18 hours, what's his rate? 1 18th. You got it. Then it says, after he's been working alone for eight hours, he is joined by Jethro. Working together, they complete the job in four hours. Now, wait a minute. Here's the thing. If you haven't picked up on this yet, I'm going to make sure you see it here. Whenever they tell us the amount of time working together, that goes in both boxes because you know what? I have John and now I know I have Jethro working. So working together, that's the only information that I'll ever put in the time box. Took him four hours. Now it says, how long would it take Jethro working alone? I don't know. I do not know how fast Jethro can do the job, but I do know this. I'm going to say one over X for his rate. Rate times time equals work. So 1 18th times 4, that's 4 18ths. I'm going to reduce it, call it 2 ninths. 4 times 1 over x, I'm going to call that 4 over x. Now here is the thing. You might be saying, wait a minute, what happened to this? You never did anything with it. Well, that was my hint. After he's been working alone for eight hours. Eight hours is working alone. That's not working with somebody else. I want to make sure you get this really solidified in your mind. Whatever I put in the time box, it only has to do with working together, not working separately. If somebody works separately, what happens is they got part of the project already completed. So let me show you this. Here's John. He's working. And he's working with Jethro. When they're working together, they're no longer going to be completing one job. They're not. Instead of setting this one equal to one, here's what's going to happen. Remember, John worked for eight hours by himself. His rate is 1 18th. So that means 8 18ths. Well, 8 18ths. I can reduce that. That's the same as four ninths. That means four ninths of the job is already complete. So I'm going to say one minus four ninths is how much job is left over. How much job is left over? Five ninths. They only have five ninths of the job to complete. If somebody works alone, what you're going to do is you're going to find that you take away how much they got done 
initially, right there. That's how it's going to affect your equation, not your chart, your equation. So let me scroll down. You'll see this setup here. Look at what I did. I did not set it equal to 1 because John already did 8 eighteenths or 4 ninths of the job. Then, look, I multiplied everything by 9x, etc. I got x equals 12, which represents how long it would take Jethro if he had worked alone. Okay, now the last story problem or word problem here makes no sense. I just thought it was funny. I made one up. I was trying to be funny. And it has to do with my friend Dora here. So let's read on. Oh, by the way, as I'm going through this, remember, all of the setups, all of this information here, I have it down below. It's written out. It's all here. So um, I'm going to cut this out so I can do problem four right in there. Whoops. Uh-oh. Let's clean that up. Cut. Ah, I still have more stuff to get out of here. Cut it out. There you go. All right. Now, I also wanted to show you that it doesn't have to be just two people working. It could be three, could be four, could be five people, whoever, you know. But in my fourth example, I have Kim, just so you know, I have Kim, I have Kay, and I have Dora. Rate times time equals work. Now, here's the thing. Kim can dig a hole in five hours. So what's her rate? You got it, one-fifth. K can dig a hole in three and a half hours. Now, here's what I, I wanted to show you this. Her rate would be one over three and a half. But that looks really ugly. And if you want to do one over 3.5, well, you know what? I hate that because you're either a decimal or a fraction. You're not both. You could think of it this way. This is how I did it. Three and a half, or three and a half can be converted to a improper. So I could say one over seven halves. If it's one over seven halves, multiply the top and bottom by two, and you'll end up with two sevenths. Two sevenths is a regular fraction. So the same thing's going to happen with Dora, because it says here, Dora can fill a hole in in four and a quarter hours. So I would say one over four and a quarter, which is the same as one over 17 fourths, which I would say I'm going to multiply top and bottom by four. And then I'd say, oh, four seventeenths. But here's the thing. It says, if all three are working at the same time, how long will it take to dig the hole? I don't know, but working together, remember, that's the only thing I ever put in a time box category. So here we go. Kim's working. So it's X times one-fifth. That's the amount of work Kim will get done. K is working. 2X over 7. That is 2 sevenths times X. That's K working. Dora working. 4 seventeenths times X looks like this. All three of these individuals are working together. They're going to dig one hole. Now, nobody started work and started doing the job by themselves earlier, so we don't have the same thing as we did in problem three here where we had to subtract something from one. But here's the silly part of this problem. Dora is trying to fill in the hole while the other two people are trying to dig it. So actually, Dora is working against them. Now, I know that sounds stupid because you would just say, hey, Dora, give me the shovel. You're not helping. But I wanted to let you guys know that when something is working against you, la, 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 you subtract it. Now, once again, I solved that equation. I multiplied everything by 595. Why did I pick that number? Because it's the same thing as 5 times 7 times 17. And I was able to cancel out all the fractions. I was able to solve the problem, etc. Now, you might ask, why would you ever want something working against you? Well, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. In reality, you would try to not have that happen. But sometimes in a work problem, we have to calculate the fact that something might be going against us instead of with us. 
you will see that when you go through your homework assignment. So here we go, the homework assignment for you. This is also on Canvas, but there it is. There's 11 questions. If you just take a picture of it with your phone right now or do a uh, screen print or something, you got this practice sheet right there. Um, but you'll find one of these where something is working against you, where you're going to have to use that subtract concept. All right, now here's the other one. Problem number 10 is a trick question. Be careful. If you don't get 10 right, ask me how to do it when you're in the class with me. But 10 is a trick question, so don't feel bad if you don't get it right. Anyway, here's your answer. Whoop, once again, answer key right there. So uh, this is the, once again, the work equals rate times time assignment, not the distance equals rate times time assignment. Okay, good luck.